Just a quick disclaimer before we jump into the video, this product was provided by Techno and they did not get any copy approval, they didn't receive any uh, warning about the video, they didn't get to review any of my script. Just so you know, this all the opinions in this video are mine and mine alone. A couple weeks ago, I made an unboxing video about the Techno Pocket Go and the Pocket Vision. Those two devices, respectively, are one of the most compelling and interesting PC handhelds out on the market now. And you can finally go to their Kickstarter and get your early bird pricing on that. More on that later in the video. My initial impressions of the device were really cool, if not a little bit janky. And now that I've spent a good month with this device, it has been a very interesting experience. I truly never anticipated this being a concept that would be made, and there are some parts of it that I thought would have been way cooler than they ended up being in the long term. The overall build quality of the device is pretty good. It feels weighty in the hand, but not too overly dense considering the fact that it has a whole computer in it. And being the design and shape of a your standard DualSense or Xbox One style controller, it maintains its you know overall weight to size ratio pretty decently being a tad bit larger than your average xbox one dualsense controller but in this demonstration i am comparing it against a switch pro controller i do not have all my controllers with me at the moment as you can tell from the not standard filming location in terms of weight it compares itself very similarly to some of the more Pro and Elite style controllers. The Pocket Go weighs about 550 grams, and once you take the battery out, it weighs quite a bit less. The overall build quality is decent. It has full size analog sticks that are Hull Effect. It has Hull Effect triggers that I had some problems with. I also had some problems with the analog sticks, but we'll get into that later. The D pad was shockingly pretty good. I actually ended up really liking the round disc style D pad. Makes it really good for fighting games, but overall I actually quite liked its super clicky feel. And same goes for the face buttons. Your ABXYs usually are stuck with rubber dome switches, but this time around they ended up using micro switches making the face buttons super duper clicky. I really like the clicky buttons, but my one problem with them is the super shallow actuation point, making the press not very deep and long like you'd normally have on a traditional rubber membrane switch you find in pretty much every other controller out there. You have to get a little bit used to it in my opinion. I would find myself pressing on these buttons quite a bit harder even though you don't really need that much force to actuate these things. Game performance is really good. I play mostly just your esports and indie game stuff so nothing too intensive. I still haven't even really played Cyberpunk. But I tell you this, it runs Destiny 2 very well. With a mixture of medium to low settings on 1080p, I was able to sustain almost 50 to 60 FPS for dip down to 40 when things get a little too crazy. Overall though, the experience was quite well. The specs of my device are an AMD Ryzen 7 8840U with 16 gigabytes of memory are clocked at 7400 megatransfers per second which is pretty common amongst computing devices. It comes with 512 gigabytes of PCIe 4.0 storage. It has two USB Type-C ports, which at the moment aren't enabled for USB 4 speeds and things like external GPUs and whatnot. But in Device Manager, it did say that these are USB 4.0 ports. So maybe once this thing is at full commercial release, it should have that. But at the moment on my pre-production model, it is currently not enabled. And at last, it has a micro SD card slot. The overall battery life of this device isn't great, though it is compromised by the fact that it is a removable battery which you can buy replacements for at a fairly decent price once this thing fully releases. Extra batteries will cost about 50 bucks, which honestly isn't terrible. It's about the price of a battery bank that you're going to buy for this device anyways. So might as well just get the extra battery life in the form of an entirely second battery. This isn't confirmed functional, but to my understanding with how this thing could potentially work, as long as you're connected to power when you switch batteries, you could very easily just plug into like a charger 
and swap batteries to a fully charged one from a dead one and be able to just seamlessly switch between the two. Moving on to the glasses, and thank you to OKS Gamer for allowing me to use some of their footage because I was unable to get a clear image of what it actually looks like when you're wearing the glasses. And if I'm being honest, the claimed 215 inch display you see is more like a 27 inch screen from like four feet away. It's not a very convincing optical illusion, but other than that, it does end up still looking pretty good. It's still two dual 1080p micro OLED displays, and you still receive those inky blacks characteristic of OLED. And you can even use the glasses on more than just the Techno Pocket Go. You can use it on your gaming laptop, your phone, your tablet, other gaming systems. It is a pretty convenient thing. But the fact that you can buy these separately is still pretty convenient, but without them, it kind of makes the whole device a little pointless. These glasses even support motion controls, but I didn't test that mainly because I didn't know how to turn it on. These did not come with very many instructions. This is probably hands down one of the most unique designs for a PC handheld. And the fact that you're basically left with just a plug and play device, which the idea of that is pretty compelling. Be able to just plug this in and leave it on your desk as a mini PC is a pretty cool idea. And being able to remove the battery to protect its health is pretty compelling too. Because a big problem a lot of these other PC handles find themselves with is just overall just sitting and killing their battery staying plugged in all the time. I see people who exclusively play their switches in docked mode not being able to, you know, turn their switches on off the dock because of the fact that they spent their whole lives on the dock. The battery spent the whole time charging and just slowly killed the battery. Same thing happens to phones, tablets, and things like the Steam Deck. But from a practicality standpoint, I can definitely see this device being overall less practical and not necessarily being able to be played in all the same portable areas. A big piece of the marketing is that this is an incredibly portable device, but the fact that you have to wear glasses to be able to play this thing does sort of stop you from playing it in public places like a library, a, a school campus, a bus, just because those are areas where you might want to be able to be more aware of your surroundings. So the idea of playing this laying down in a bed, which is how I use this a lot, because it was just actually just a very comfortable way to play your games. And having to like sit up in your bed and stare at a screen, you get to lay back fully reclined and really engross yourself in whatever you're playing. And I actually found it the most comfortable even draping a blanket over my face with the glasses on to fully darken the area around it for maximum immersion. The first three hours of me having this device, that's all I did, lay in bed and stare into the technically my ceiling, but I had the glasses on. It was really, really cool. My sister came in and asked if I was sleeping, but I was like, no, 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 I'm not sleeping. I'm playing a video game, but you can't see the video game. While not being the most practical solution, it is incredibly convenient in certain areas where a traditional PC handheld would, you know, be lacking in that space. Moving on to navigation. This is a quirky device, so navigating Windows is going to be rather interesting, especially compared to how it is on other PC handhelds. At least there on other PC handhelds, you have a touchscreen, which allows you to interact with the operating system, tap icons, type on the keyboard. Overall, it is not a perfect input method, but it is a input method. With this device having no touch screen or any literal screen you could really interact with outside of the glasses, that leaves you with pure controller input, which isn't the best, but it has gotten better. My original experience with this device when I first unboxed it was the controller sticks were not great. They suffered from crazy drift, making navigating windows near impossible. The only way I was able to get anything done was by connecting it to an external display that had a touchscreen and holding down the button that switches you between controller and keyboard mode brings up their own custom digital keyboard which i'll be honest isn't particularly great but once i was able to fix the drifting issues with some new firmware that they sent me which completely solved my issues and i have made sure that would be fixed for all devices when those come out in a few months and it was mine due to a particular pre-production issue it was an unfortunate stain in my early experience with the device, but once it was fixed, overall, 
navigation of Windows was a little bit clumsier, but a little bit better in terms of the joystick to mouse and stuff. That is actually quite a bit better on this device than I've experienced on many other devices. They have a quick menu that you can pop up even when you're in games to suspend a game. It allows you to change power states, the VRAM, what kind of rendering mode you have. It's pretty simple stuff, but it's nice to have it here, especially when a game crashes and your only way to get out of it is by opening this quick menu. And their version of ASUS Armory Crate Legion Space, that kind of software, isn't particularly amazing either, but it did get better once I had updated it. It became way more useful, it allows you to control dead zones, quick open games that are, you know, willing to work with that software. Not all the games I've tried do want to do that though. This is probably one of the most interesting PC handhelds in a concept that I would like to see go further. Something I wish they could have done instead of AR glasses is more goggles that have a screen in them because I really enjoyed playing this with a fully darkened area around my eyes. Because you could already barely see with these things on anyways. So might as well just fully commit to that goggle type aspect it probably helped make this device way more comfortable. And I would recommend getting this device, especially because with the early bird specials that they're going on on their Kickstarter, you could get this device for about 900 bucks. And at that price point, including the glasses, that's really good. But if you wait until later, you're going to be paying about $1,700, which isn't great, especially considering how much this stacks up against its competitors I mean, you can just buy the glasses separately for about 200 bucks it is a tough pill to swallow assuming that you do get it at that early bird pricing i think it is an incredible value this is an incredibly powerful handheld with some really cool and interesting things that I frankly have never seen before in PC handheld. For that, I do commend this device because they seem to be the only ones trying to do anything different in this space. And if you find yourself interested in this product, I would highly recommend you go down to the first link in the description or into the first pinned comment of this video to go check it out. Their Kickstarter, they are actively campaigning now. And if you act quick, you can get super early bird pricing, which will afford this device to become way cheaper than it is going to be when it fully releases. And I definitely have some plans for this device in the future. I'm gonna throw a picture up on screen now. Adding a screen to this might be probably one of my funnest projects I'm actively working on. And a stretch goal is adding a 360 chat pad style keyboard underneath uh, the main stick area and in between the two paddles essentially. So I am pretty excited and hoping I can get that to work. I would love to hear what you guys think down below. Are you interested in this device? Is this a device you find incredibly exciting? I would love to hear what you guys think down below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.